Hello and welcome to another broadcast day. My name's Irrelevant, this is Do All The Things, and on today's episode I smell a rat. Everybody's favorite distortion pedal that is, it's getting built. Stay tuned for that. You know, when researching pedals, this is one that comes up often. And it's wondering, like, there's there, there's quite a few vi different versions of it, but not quite as much as the Big Muff Pie. And then you also question, like, how good is this if uh, people keep modding on it? Because there's a lot of mods for it, too. But hey, today I'm gonna find out because I am building one. And I'm building one based on a schematic I found. The Multi-Rat. Pretty much shows you the schematic of the rat, plus all the different versions of it in one schematic. We got this chart down here that tells you the uh, component changes and then it points out where those components have changed. This awards us the opportunity to pick the version we want to build and maybe even add switching to go to the different versions. And indeed, based on my research, it seems that the rat is the rat too right here. So the original rat in the first column, apparently, is like the version they made in the basement and, and first released. And then they made a few changes, adjustments to it. And in the mass production version, that's probably more common, it was the rat too. Now they reissued the original version later in the vintage rat in the fourth column, except with the different diodes, but they also had a turbo rat Rat and a you dirty rat. This tells you pretty much how to build all of them. Or at least, I have to take its word for it. So as far as the layout, I came up with this. Based on a typical 5x7 perf board, this uh, is intended to cover all of the bases. So let me show you what I've done here. In this chart, for example, we have a uh, C13, which is this popper over here, is a 1U in the original and the vintage, but a 10U in the more modern versions. And then R15 either appears or disappears based on which configuration. When you have the 10U, you have the 10K R15. If you have the 1U, you don't have that. So over here on the schematic, I have switching provisions to accommodate that. This is going to be a triple jumper. In one position, it connects the 10U capacitor and the 10 10K ground shunt resistor, and then in this position, it connects the 1U and removes the 10K. So we'll be able to toggle between those two different configurations. Also, one difference that we find is R4 goes between a 1 meg and a 2.2 meg. R4 is right here that connects the uh, V bias power supply to the op amp. That is seen right here. We have our V plus in, we have our two 100Ks uh, voltage divider, the 1U stabilizer, and then there's going to be the main 2.2 meg. But if I put a jumper in place here, it puts this 1.82 meg resistor in parallel, bringing it down to a total of 0.9. 99 something, which for our purposes, I think is close enough to one meg to get the effect we want. We did the same thing up here with this switching metrics. If you see here on the JFET, we have a combination of R10 and R16. In many variations of the rat, R10 is one meg, except for the turbo rat where it's a 2.2 and we add R16, another 2.2. That's a voltage divider uh, reference for the gate. Whereas in the other versions, they just have, you know, the shunt to ground, so it's a zero voltage reference on the gate. And we set that up over here with this triple jumper. If we put it in the up position, again, we have a 1.82 in parallel with the 2.2, making our one meg. But then if we put it down in the position, we get a 2.2, and then it connects this 2.2 that's on the V+, and that's gonna give us that effect. Now, if you look at the chart, that covers a majority of the circuit differences between these pedals, aside from the dot. Diodes. Well, the diodes was easy. I'm just putting a couple sockets into that position. Then I can stick whatever diode configuration I want in there. Even there's three positions, so you could maybe do some asymmetrical trickery. One socket's connected to the signal path. The other socket's connected to the ground. And then I have a jumper here that allows me to disconnect the diode clipping altogether. Meanwhile, one common modification for this mad pedal, uh, I find it here in a document called the Mightier Mouse, the Ruets mod. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on here, but uh, this is one that comes up quite often. And at base value, what this mod will do, it will disconnect R6 and C7 from the feedback network here. This uh, has an effect on the frequency response of the pedal. It's said to flatten out the frequency response and give you less gain. Apparently you can use it more of an, as an overdrive if you uh, do this. 
But then in another version of the mod, the lube mod, you would actually replace this 47 ohm with a potentiometer upwards of 1K so you can fine tune dial in the effect that that circuit has. Well, I have a variation of that in the layout right over here. Here's the 47, there's a jumper where I can connect it or disconnect it to the feedback circuit, but then I can also jumper it up this way, connecting it to this socket where I can stick some sort of custom value of resistor in there to maybe fine tune. Now we can assume 47 is the lowest value. I'm not sure if they would turn it down lower than that. Maybe they would, but you know, we're going to start with 47 and then with this, I can increase the value from there. If we're going with a 1k potentiometer, then I guess I would hazard, we would typically be turning it up over 47. So, you know, I have a variety of resistors to work with. I can play with different values in there and see what effects I have. Now, one modification I found online that I didn't have loaded up in time for filming here shows that if you disconnect this 47 circuit, you can start tweaking on the 5 60 because some people might find they don't have enough bite if they disconnect that 47 and what you would tweak on would be this capacitor value here the 4.7 u so again i have another triple jumper connects between stock or a modified situation where i have another socket and i could pop different capacitors in there of course i have a socket for the op amp and then i have a socket for the compensation capacitor not that i really want to play around with the value of the compensation capacitor but some op amps might not need it <laughs> I don't have an LM308 to work with, but I did get my hands on an LM108, which is supposed to be a military grade version. Some say it performs identically, some say it doesn't. Either way, it's gonna do the job because there's also some reading online that says it's an upgrade from the 308 and the RAT. That said, I also have an OP07 and here is a Russian 308. It's a bit noisy, but it does have a similar sound to the 108, so I'm guessing it's on par. And then I'm wondering what other effect we might get here because there is one boutique maker of this pedal, someone who a, a company that clones it where based on what I read the circuits pretty much identical except they uh, they happened upon a different op amp which they won't say what it is that sounds better so I'm of the firm belief that some of the original components used in the original versions of the pedal weren't the best they're just the best of what they had to work with or the more affordable part and then over here, I have a transistor socket for the JFET because that is a circumstance that's doing me a concern. Stock, it calls for 2N5458, which is something that you can get your hands on if you want. I wasn't able to get my hands on in time for filming, but some research that I found just straight up said, oh, all right, I can use any JFET there. Uh, okay, so I ended up with a, uh, a J111. I guess we're gonna see how well this works. I am thinking that the 10K source resistor here is the closest we're gonna get to setting the bias of this pupper. So that's pretty much just gonna to be the key to making it work if I can tweak on that source. So I'm thinking of replacing that 10K with a nice, uh, I got a 20K potentiometer here. It's not gonna hurt putting that in, but it means I might be able to fine tune dial this. It's also been said that you can use a, a common transistor if you have a slightly different arrangement. They say you should use a voltage divider, which coincidentally, because I have the circuit set up to cover all the bases, I do. This little switch here that has the 2.2 and 2.2 represented here with R16 and R16. R10. Apparently that's gonna be just the trick I need to get a transistor to work on this. Then I do have these guys I got in. I wonder how well these would work. These are from Russia. They are KT3102s. I brought these in because they're supposed to be Russian equivalents of the BC239, is it, or 293? Whatever they used in the uh, Big Muff Pie. I was specking out a Big Muff Pie build before I decided to take the op amp route. And now I, I don't have much use for these other than hopefully they'll be a good general purpose audio transistor. Just to mine the pinout, because a JFET pinout is very different. We got three A100K TT Electronics P09X5Ns potentiometers. These guys in particular, I do not like them because they have a dumb orientation. If you can see, it's gonna be oriented this way on the pedal. Look where the flat's pointing. And then I turn it. I'm gonna have uh, my knobs pointed in a very silly direction. Otherwise, I can kind of try to pinch it on this edge here. We'll see. And I only need these to be single gang, so I gotta break off the second gang like a show. Snip. 
Now, one substitution that I might mention. Over here in the power supply, we have a 4002. I can't think of any reason why it has to be a 4002 and not a 4007. Now, mind you, what's the schematic say? Oh, it wants a 4004. Best of my knowledge, their specifications are all completely identical except for their maximum voltage rating, which are all well above the threshold of a nine volt pedal. And this guy is really just for reverse polarity protection. What happens is if you accidentally uh, put the wrong polarity in here, this is basically going to ground it out and not allow any power to charge the circuit. Meanwhile, the 47 ohm resistor here on the very top, it's handy for, you know, making sure that you don't just dead short. That's one of the reasons why that's there. Aside from it, it also has some effect on hum, making an RC network with the capacitors. Either way, I got to start getting each potch on there. And I put them on the solder side, bend those to tighten into place. And then those mounting lugs are gonna get tacked down. Now, an unfortunate side effect of these particular potentiometers is they have an odd footprint, right? We got four points, but the board itself is even. So the center one's not gonna sit perfectly center. It's gonna have a slight bias to one side. Once again, remember to turn your pots all to one side. And my layout, we're looking at the board like this. So the pots are facing that way. Now I'm not 100% sure on the orientation. So the distortion and the um, filter pot, it pretty much goes straight through. So hooking up which side is the in and out doesn't matter, but what will matter is which two we couple together. I'm pretty sure I got this one figured out because we can extrapolate how the feedback circuit works. The more resistance we have here, the more distortion we're going to get because it's suppressing feedback that suppresses the distortion. So with this pot turned all the way with that wiper to this position, that's going to be the least amount of distortion. So I'm confident about this one. The filter though, I'm not sure the orientation. The schematic doesn't really tell you clockwise, counterclockwise. Maybe it's implied and based on this reference, but then I've also heard it's hooked up backwards. We want to make it so that we can move this link later and hit our target response. And now I kind of him and haw and figure out how to proceed. Cause bud, we got a frig of a lot of little puppers coming in here. Where's our socket go? Three down from the pot. One, two, three, yeah. And three over right there. Right off side, bud. And there's the one pin that stays put. I guess I'll go ahead and put the uh, feedback resistor compensation feedback. Compensation capacitor socket into place. And to do that, I need to make these holes bigger so that it fits through the board. Makes it a heck of a lot easier to mount. I drill holes with this little screwdriver. Basically find a screwdriver or drill bit that's the same width as the, 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 the thick part of the IC socket. And we should be able to press fit it on and it won't fall out on us and it will sit deep down there. Oh, good thing my vise opens this way. Well, you know what? I might just be able to bend this pin over. Oh yeah, look at that, bud. Uh, except that the pin just broke off. And these boards are not stiff, so they flex too much in the vise. Okay, I got the, uh, the op amp socket pin to move over there. I will attempt to bend an IC socket pin again. Yeah, it felt like it wanted to break too. Yep, totally broke. We'll just, uh, okay. Still getting used to working with these IC sockets. You know, some of the finer aspects of the techniques that I use here, I kind of figure out as I go along, especially when it's a connection you've never made before. Murata MLCCs for the 100P and to save a lot of trouble, if I just jam them through the same holes as the potentiometer, I can use its leads to make further connections. Fold these guys back so I can access them. It's time to get a 1K in here. And I have such a massive surplus of these old carbon comps. These are high end Rubicons, not necessarily audio, but okay, I'm so confident about this. I'm gonna do a lead wrap. I take this lead, gonna put it through the hole to bridge those two pot connections. Pull her taut. Oi, you distorted my cap, bud. Get that back in there. And we'll use that to connect out the rest of the circuit specifically we have a socket coming up which means we gotta lead wrap it again and bring it back down through the hole now i gotta get that triple jumper in here salvage this off at old motherboard and it goes somewhere right here mess area is getting a bit tight pretty sure i should be able to get all the components i need to use in place there though learning from my mistakes i'm going to attempt to make this connection by bending the ic socket pin again and yes it breaks off every time 
Can I just blob some solder over? Yes. Is that the best audio connection? No. Is this a resistance modifier? And it's not gonna be bad to have a little bit of resistance on this connection? Yeah, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Stock, off, modified. Hmm, so many jumpers, so little time. Well, I got a while yet. This socket jumper configuration's a bit tight. Hopefully we'll be able to get our component in there. Get into very surgical bits here where I gotta connect all these jumpers and sockets together with little pieces of scrap lead. Very tricky to do these bends. Start weaving our ground bus. One of the things that makes the rat a bit easier is uh, the pots don't all need to be grounded like some other builds. Which means you don't need to run ground lines all the way up to the top of the circuit. Oh, this is getting tight. The jumper's like gonna be hiding right in there. At least I have tabs to grab onto it with. Come on, man. I need to take a break. Really not sure what to expect of these old carbon comps. Normally, I wouldn't much care for a carbon comp. Unfortunately, though the schematic calls for a 1.6K, I have a 1.5K in stock, so that's gonna have to do. I start establishing this weaving method where like, one ground bus wire will come in here, I'll pop it through the hole there, uh, right next to the n previous component, and then we'll just kind of leapfrog down the line. Getting pretty good at this perf boarding. Oh, weaving a power line, bud. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, you can't even see details of what I got going on here. This lead going all the way, weaving through these components to get the power to the uh, microprocessor there. This is coming along nicely, but oh boy, it's time consuming. I got a break for dinner and I am just about to finish the ground bus. Oh, we just have to tack all this weave together now. Well, there's one more connection that needs to be made up here. Ha, ground bus is complete, pretty much. And I managed to get the 10K potentiometer in plot, or the 20K, so we'll buy us on that. By Jove, I think we might be ready for wires. I'm looking at this, I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at that, and it looks like I have everything in place, except for the jumper for the sweeper pot, the tone pot, the filter pot. Until I know for sure what position it is, I can take this and slip it under the bent contacts. Mm, come on, man. Just jam that wire under there, and bend those down. Once I can confirm with certainty that that is a uh, correct sweep for the tone, filter, whatever, I'll do something more permanent. But in the meantime, I think we're ready for wire. Red, blue, black, and white. This has taken a solid, I wanna say three hours, or was it two hours? I don't know, I lost count. So right here's our output. I might go underneath the board. And sometimes if you're lucky, you can straight up jam the wire through the same hole as the pot lead. And make a little bit more room for it. Oh yeah, that's gonna work well. Black, common negative is this little corner over here. Red, positive, where does that go? It interfaces here with this guy. Ooh, it's a little 47. Will they share a hole? No, they don't wanna share a hole, so I'm gonna put it right next. Oh, finally, white input. That goes over here. I got multiple folds going on. Let's douse her in solder. That should be it. Everything's connected now. All right, I think it's time to drill some hole buds. I think you know it. So right at about one and a half centimeters, I'm gonna start my hole for the power adapter. Oh, hey, this one isn't uh, exactly six centimeters like the smaller boxes I'm used to working on. Three inches. Okay, we go from three centimeters to three inches. That's nice. So one and a half it is then. Now, unfortunately, I'm out of stock on the uh, new style plastic ones. So I gotta make this with my uh, center positive power supply in mind. I think this will be one of the last ones I do with that. I gotta reorder. Oh, now that we know where our jack's gonna sit, let's figure out where our board's gonna sit. These color codes I'm using are awfully American. In this example, we don't really have to bend these contacts out of the way. All right, that's where we want our pots. The board's gonna go in like this. So we want to put all these pots so that we can find center and then put it up against here like this and we can get the correct positions. Cause remember this guy's not perfectly center. I do believe this is some sort of masonry nail. It is really hard grade steel. Great punch. Oh, we got a chunky one here, some debris built up underneath this guy. Let's see how the board fits. Fits great so far. Oh, I almost forgot. We gotta break off the little snoots. All right, mock mounting up the PCB. I know it's not a P. All right, so we're gonna toss an input jack leg right here, bud. Yeah, and an output jack leg right here. And we try to find uh, the center that we want. Lots of room in this box, so 
Tolerances don't have to be as tight. And so I don't get confused, because one time I got the backwards, in and out, the in hole is bigger than the out hole. Hmm, that's not as dirty as I'm thinking it is, is it? Now we just have to situate the stomp switch. So, we put a battery in. Stomp switch is gonna hold the battery in place. So let's move the battery all the way here. Move the stomp switch all the way to the edge. Pretty much right here, bud. Now we copy that dimension over to the front, or the top. The upper facing side. And our width again is like three inches. So 1.5. And this is a straight up half inch hole. Well, ran out of drill because these bolts like to migrate downwards. Maybe you should tighten the bud. Nah, that'd be too much trouble. There we go. <clears throat> now the best part, assembly. Hey, relax, bud. Oh, let's do the peel on camera for you, buds, this time. I just don't want to get flakes of crap everywhere. I just cleaned. Oh, 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 this one's being a teases. Ah, uh, you get that satisfying new thing peel every time you build one of these. Oh, we have debris. Oh yeah, bud. I think I got a bit off center for the controls here. <laughs> I'm gonna go over the garbage, do a little bit of the, uh, you know, the this. Remember, you cannot impress her if you don't chamfer and deburr. Their black finish is real nice. I don't think it's gonna scratch as much as their colored finishes. They'll give you a lock washer with this one. She likes to spin. I got these nice plastic leads here with wires that are a bit too long. Battery's gonna sit roughly about here. I want this to come around the periphery. This particular jack needs a common positive, which is gonna be the center terminal. And it's the negative that's gonna be switched. And the switch is on the outer terminal. Well, that most, yeah. Okay, this red one has to come around and go to there. That's everything that has to connect up underneath the board. So now we can get the board in place. You know what I'm finding funny? I got the orientation of this. The board's too far this way. But coincidentally, the offset pot, the middle pot, it seems to have hit dead center. <laughs> oh boy. Now again, this thing's completely ground isolated. Grounding is done through the wires, not through the chassis. I want a good ground to chassis, so the output jack is a standard jack and we put a star washer on it so it has a solid connection. This ground line's gonna have to go all the way over here. Input jack without that dumb little washer they come with. You never get enough thread bite with it. The battery should still clear if we connect it. Okay, that looks good. Yes, everything looks good. Everything looks good, so we're gonna be okay. Oh, I forgot to put the ground line in place, bud. Oh boy. Or not the ground line, the power negative. And then of course that connects to ring. There we go. And the sleeve, we have the proper ground line. And it's not alone, because we need a wire that's gonna pass through to the output jack. Sometimes it's easier to feed it through those jacks, put a little tinning on the end of it. And these guys are coming this way, so let's get this guy up in here. Now we gotta get our stomp switch into place. Okay, home stretch. Hey, don't bend that so much out of the way. We got our bypass crossbar in place for a true, true bypass, DPDT style. All right, so lose out, which conveniently is this side. Our jack is now connected to the switch. All right, now our output jack is connected to the switch. Oh boy, bods, oh boy. And goes the circuit output. One more wire connection left. And time! 27 minutes for assembly. And I know, I know, I do too. I wanna to put the knobs on. But it's bad luck to put the knobs on before we've tested it. So let us put in the crystals. I'm gonna kick things off by taking an impedance measurement. This impedance measurement is going to be from ground to the center. We're gonna dial that into 10K, get it ready. There we go, stock value, dialed into the potentiometer. Let us just jam this JFET into place. Oh look, it's just gonna clear the lid. And of course, we're gonna start off with an LM108. Now, if there's one thing I've learned, that first input capacitor can make or break a circuit. So I have made it socketable. We put the input capacitor into place. Uh, put the jumper to activate the stock mode. Put the jumper to connect the 560 to the stock capacitor. That's the feedback mode set. And this position will be stock mode also. I burned through a lot of jumpers in this build. Activate the diodes. And over here, the 10U10K. And finally, we got a pair of 1N48s. Oh, these are gonna be trickier to install. Why is that in there? I have 914s in stock. All of everything's equal, I'll probably use those ones. All right, diodes are in place and then finally, 
Here is the 30 PF compensation capacitor. This thing should be ready to fire up now. I'm gonna plug in a dummy jack. Let's probe some numbers here. Uh, from ground to source. 8.2 volts, yeah, apparently that's gonna be wrong. I believe it's gotta be like 4.5, half, close enough. Wonder what resistance we ended up setting that to. Probably a lot less than 10K. All right, bud, what do you got for us? What do you got for us, Dratten? Other than a lot of buzz. It's strawberry. Well, I'll tell you about it. I think it is just a little bit of fine tuning. Just a little bit of fine tuning. So the first thing I want to do is determine uh, what setting this potentiometer should be in. So yeah, it seems to work. And I guess it does kind of work backwards like what they described it. So what happens if I move the little tone jumper over to the next setting? Garbo. It's supposed to be the other way. Let us solidify that. Curve is Garbo. The curve is Garbo. All right, now one of the things I want to do is I want to pull this JFET out and I want to reset this back to 10K. Oh boy, did it? Did I really dial it down to almost nothing? Look at what it says. 130 ohms? Wow, really? Because like it sounds, it just sounds flubby. And I think uh, that JFET's part of the problem. Sounds normal now, back up to 10K. I guess I did wasn't dialing it in right. Okay, so let's see what uh, the quick Zietz mod does here. Let's uh, let's uh, pull the 47 off. Yeah, I guess I can see how that would be interpreted more as an overdrive.
this mod that I have on the 560Z could disconnect that circuit. dump more base to ground because it gets a little bit flubby there when I start pumping it up. Uh, which theoretically I can kind of do with that 560 mod. I think it recommended plugging an 0047 into the capacitor mod spot. Let's see what that does. profound an effect that I was hoping. There's one other thing I can try, and that is I have this input capacitor 022. Pull that out and replace it with a 0.01. We'll go half the value and the capacitor I have quickly accessible in stock is a Murata MLCC. That's okay. I think the Murata MLCCs actually sound good. Hey, stupid battery clip. I said stupid battery clip. No, it's the battery's worn out. Get tightened up there, bud. Let's take that 047 we just pulled out. I'm getting into modding on this pedal already and I'm probably out of time. Let's put that 022 we just pulled out in the, the spare slot. What does that make? <laughs> You know what, it's actually not bad. I'm I'm not plugged into a good amp or cab right now. It's a good recording cab, so it probably sounds decent to you, but it's my uh, Crate Blue Voodoo combo. It's good on its own. I, I wouldn't plug a pedal into it, or you know what, I can plug directly into the power amp. Right into the return, bud. Oi, now we depend on the volume on the pedal. All right, that's gonna be a more transparent sound because it's not depending on the clean channel. Okay. 
sounds awfully thin on the effects return. It's working. I don't need to take her apart. It's tested. And it's really not that bad. The fact that I can turn the distortion down to a level that does give me crunch, doesn't give me flub, and I can still get harmonics means it's going to be playable to me. And I haven't even scratched the surface yet. I have all sorts of configuration changes I can make. In the meantime, I'm going to get the knobs put on here. These small, cheap, undersized circles in which the same I put in the orange box. And these potentiometers, they have a wonky orientation. So it's like we could start there and then they would end there and halfway is like that. That's freaking hilarious, bud. Do I, do I want to play that game or do I want to just try biting them on there normal? It's like we, we side bite into the shaft like this. Can in theory, that's fine. Yeah, it's less confusing that way. And there we go. Knobs on, very plain looking, but effective. <sighs> I'm gonna chalk this up to a theoretical success. We need to do some more experimentations on it. So stay tuned and find out. I feel like I'm over saying that because I, I still don't know how to end these things. Oh boy. I got an idea on how to end it. Just press stop. That memory card's out anyway. Damn, what did I lose?